Hello, investors, and welcome to our session here today. My name is Ken Rose, and this is Short Verticals. So, you know, one of the key areas, or one of the key setups some, some traders are looking for with regards to short verticals is called a bullish bounce. Sometimes those bullish bounces coincide with Fibonacci levels. This is called a confluence of indicators, and that'll be our primary focus here in today's discussion. Before we get too far along, though, let's go ahead and pop through our disclosures. I'm going to take care of one other item here as well. And that is taken care of. So in wave disclosures, investors, just a reminder that options do carry a high level of risk and are not suitable for all investors. The information here is for general informational purposes only. Should not be considered an individualized recommendation or endorsement of any particular security, chart pattern, or investment strategy. For the sake of simplicity, the examples in this presentation do not take into consideration commission and other transaction fees. We do use a paper money application. This is for educational purposes only. We want to remember that successful virtual trading during one time period does not guarantee successful investing of extra funds during a later time period, as market conditions do change continuously. And here occasionally, we will hold our positions up to and sometimes through expiration. Do keep in mind that short options can be assigned at any time up to expiration, regardless of the end of the money amount. And then the money option has a high risk of being assigned early. It's important to keep that in mind because the paper money virtual trading application will not assign a short position early, which is different from what could occur in a real trading account. We will discuss the Greeks as they become applicable to our discussion as well. And always remember the past performance of any security strategy does not guarantee future results or success. So then, investors, let's just go ahead and jump right in. And to do that, I'm going to bring up the Thinkorswim platform here, and we can just get going here. And just as that's coming up, we want to come over here and welcome everybody here. So welcome to, looks like we've got a nice crowd here today. Welcome to Gary and Howard and Jim. BJ and KB and Bob and Lee, Frank, David, Uber driver, TM, Kevin, and everybody else. So we have Cameron May over there in the chat window. Great to have Cameron here with us today. Very knowledgeable investor. Do feel free to send your questions over there to Cameron. I'll also peek over there periodically to see if there's something that I can help out with as well. well let's just take a look at the overall market, kind of see what's going on. That could probably give us a little bit of a guidance as far as where we may look with regards to looking for and possibly finding stocks that are bouncing to the upside and possibly identifying those bounces that are also occurring at, at Fibonacci levels. So come over here, here we have the S&P 500. Look at the S&P 500. Doesn't look like we're getting a bounce here today. We did get a bounce yesterday. A nice strong green candle. Looks like we're pausing here on the S&P 500 here today. If we go here and take a look at the NASDAQ, not really a bounce here. We did have a bounce yesterday. But looks like we're pausing and actually drifting to the downside here on the NASDAQ. We may have a little bit of a challenge here, <laughs> finding, finding some bouncing securities. Go over here and take a look at the Russell. So the Russell's a little bit of a different situation. We can see the Russell is in, a, is in an uptrend, an uptrending channel pulled down. It is bouncing to the upside. So if you have the Russell bouncing the upside, what can that tell us as far as possibly finding some stocks, individual stocks that are bouncing? Well, the Russell, a major part of the Russell is financial stocks, a lot of the, a lot of the regional banks and like. So we take, when we go over and take a look at our watch list, we'll take a look at some of the financial stocks, see possibly we're getting some bounces on some of those that we could analyze further. So let's come back over here then and bring up this chart. Here we have our $1 wide liquid watch list. I frequently am asked, hey, Ken, can I get a link to that watch list? Just a little bit of a heads up. If you look at the bottom of your YouTube window, You'll have a short description for today's session. There'll also be the word more. When you click on more, it opens up a more detailed description. Within that detailed description, you'll see a link for how to build an option traders watch list. I'd encourage you to, to view that session because that takes you, takes you through the steps that we use in building our watch list here. There's also a link to the watch list as well. It's probably a little bit on the older side. So I'd, I'd, I would strongly encourage you to go ahead and and, and look at the link there for the session where we talked about building the watch list. Also, while we're talking about the YouTube window, you'll notice in the lower right-hand corner, there's a little subscribe button there. If you haven't already subscribed, by all means, hit that subscribe button so you're subscribed to the Trader Talks channel. That way you can join the thousands, and I mean literally thousands and thousands of other investors that uh, are subscribing to the channel here, and that helps them to keep up to date with all the with all the new things and all the all the different things that are going on, the different coaches and teaching and all that kind of stuff as well. Okay, so with that having been said, then here's our one dollar wide liquid watch. As I pulled up here, I created a sector column, and then I sorted by sector, and here's our financials right here. 
Let's just kind of, well, I'm, I'm not going to look at these in any particular order. Okay, let's just take a look at Bank of America to begin with. That's the first one here on our list. We'll pull that up. And we can see the Bank of America, it's come down here, it's bounced. It's actually breaking through a little resistance level right here. So we got the bounce, and part of that bounce is a follow through and breaking through the resistance level. Is this resistance level here, possibly this support here, is that tied into a Fibonacci extension level or a Fibonacci retracement level? One of the things we can do is we, is we can look at one of the more recent runs, and this is a recent run where we came up here, we, we ran all the way up here, then we started to go sideways here, had a little bit of an ascending triangle, we broke out. So let's take a look at this run here and look at some Fibonacci extensions related to that and see if it ties in closely to some of these levels over here, some of these, some of these technical levels. So I'm just going to come over here and grab the highest close that we had right here as far as that run. I'm going to come down here possibly down here to just on the other side of that gap right there, uh, about right there, okay? And you can see that we're sitting, that this resistance level that we broke above is sitting at the Fibonacci extension level of 123.6. So they're not exact, but they are fairly close. And that level is sitting there at about 35.72. So if we were able to create a short put vertical and build that short put vertical at $35 or lower, then would be sitting below that support level, that theoretical support level was resistance. Now it's a theoretical support level right there after the breakout of that resistance. Level. So that would be a possibility. Let's go over here and take a look at the trade page here for just a second. See if we can get something in the $35 range. We've gone out about 23 days, but investors with the overall market moving up as high as it has, that tends to push levels of implied volatility down. We may have to go out here to 30 days to get, a, to get a premium that would be somewhat attractive. So here we are at 35, and I can just tell 35, a premium of 26, that's just not gonna do it for us. I just, you know, I just, just, you know, we got 26 here, we got 10 here, that's not gonna do it for us. Can we get something down here? If we go out a little bit further here to April 35, I'm not even sure if we'll get something here. Let's gonna go ahead and do a right click right here and choose sell, and we'll choose vertical right here and see what we got. That's given us a credit of about 17, not quite where we want to be, but it's a possibility. You know, we may want to go that high. We'd be looking at a lower return on risk than what we customarily are looking for in relationship to. I'm going to take one more peek over here, the chart BAC, and that level is again at 35.72. I guess, yeah, it's, yeah, it would, and, you know, we would probably want to be at 35 or lower. So we'll, we'll have that one on the radar. Let's take a look at a second one here. That's going to be C right here. Here, see, and you can see that C is breaking above, has broken above here, and it's kind of come down, tested this breakout level, and it's bouncing off that breakout level and starting to move to the upside. So on C, let's do the same thing and see if this little level right here, which is a significant from a technical level, does that also fit in with regards to Fibonacci extensions? I'm going to use this run right here. Remember, investors, when we're drawing Fibonacci retracements and Fibonacci extensions, we want to look at the most recent significant run in the stock. And that run in the stock has to have both a base and it also has to have a peak. In other words, so we need to find a place where it's pulled down from, as well as a, pay, as well as a place where it, where, it, where it has bounced up from. So right here, you can see we ran all the way up here, then we pulled down here, then we ran up here, then not so much of a run. It looks like more of a sideways movement here, and then, then we got the break out there. So we'll use this area right here. I'm going to start here. And that's our peak, and I'm going to come down here, and that's going to be our trough right there. And that one there is sitting right on the 123.6. That's sitting at 56.74. So let's see what we can do on this one as far as $56 or lower on this. I'm going to pull up a trade, trade page right here, and let's take this one off of here for just a second. And... Um, let's see what we want to do here. I'm going to come over here, 56 or lower. Yeah, it looks like these premiums are a little bit healthier. We've got a delta here of 29. I'm going out 30 days here rather rather than the 23, which is what we, you know, we're, we're usually sitting somewhere in the neighborhood about 20 to 30 days. We're going to go a little bit on the longer side here because the market's had this big run to the upside. So here's our 56. I'm going to do right click right there. I'm going to choose sell, a vertical, and there we actually have a rather attractive credit, 56. Let's take a look at that on the chart. That's going to sit us right here just a little bit below that support level right there. So that is a support level on the chart. It's also a Fibonacci extension level at the 123.6. Uh, 
That is a rather attractive credit. In fact, I'm curious to see when go a dollar less. Over here, let's do a 55, 54. Oh, that's a little bit too low. So we'd be looking at this one along the lines of the 56 and the 55. That one looks a little healthier than what we were looking at with regards to Bank of America. Well, let's take let's take a look at a couple more here. Then we'll go ahead and take a vote and decide which one of these we want to do a short vertical on. We'll take a look at Wells Fargo here. And what do we got? Wells Fargo looks like same kind of a thing. It came up here, broke above resistance. We actually we actually came down here. We pulled down here. We bounced. And we broke above that resistance level right there. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to use this run here and use, use the extensions from that. Now, some of you may say, hey, Ken, why don't we just draw the Fibonacci's like this? Well, we, we usually, usually when you draw Fibonacci's, you want, to, you want to look at a complete run. That takes a bottom. We have the bottom here. But do we have a top? Not anything of great significance. You know, we have a little bit of a pause and we continue to move up. So I'm going to use this little area right here. I'm going to start here and use this run here and come down here like this. Right about there. And that puts us fairly close to the 161. It's not as exact as what we had over, over there on C, on Citibank, but it is fairly close. We're sitting here. 57.50 is our... Level right here. Well, actually, that's 5729. This is 5770. So if we can get 57 or lower, we'd be down in this area right here. So let's come over here and look at a trade on this one then. Pull up here and 57 or lower. That one has a delta of 37. I'm going to try to get, I'm going to actually try to come down here to 56. This has a delta of 29 because we like to have a probability of success of 70% or greater. That means the delta that we want to have is going to be at 30 or less. So we'll drop it down here to 56. Do a right click right here. And choose sell vertical. And that is that is a nice premium, 25. Okay. Now, some of you may be saying, hey, Ken, why are you saying that that is a nice premium? Well, what, in here, what, we, what we've strived to do is we've strived to have a vertical that gives us 1% for each day that we're in the trade as far as a return on risk. This is before transaction fees and has a probability of success of 70% or greater. So we just know from experience, if we get a credit of 25 and we look at our, we look at that in relationship to our theoretical max loss, our return on risk will usually hit about 30 or, or something fairly close to that. Let's just take a look. The distance between the strike prices is a dollar. We'll subtract from that our potential credit here of 25. That means our theoretical risk is 75. And if I take 25 here then, which is our theoretical max gain, and divide that by our theoretical max loss of 75, that gives us a return of 33. And we're in the trade here for about 30 days. Okay. So that's that's the thinking behind it. What I would like to see here is, some, is something close to 25, maybe Maybe 24, 25, I think both of those would throw us in here at that, at the, at that 30% return on risk. And again, we want our delta here to be at or below 30 because the delta is giving us a theoretical probability the option will be in the money on the expiration, which means that could be a losing trade. And so if we're looking at the difference of that or the opposite of that, this is 29 here. So the opposite of that's going to be 71. So we have a 71 theoretical probability of success. Okay, so that, so that one looks interesting there on, on WFC. We've looked at C, we've looked at WFC. Maybe look at one more here. How about FI? Eh, I'm not really seeing a bounce there. One more here, PayPal. So this is interesting here on PayPal. Look at that. Whew. Like PayPal, we, 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 we actually have, what we have here is we have an ascending triangle. Let's just draw this out so we can take a peek at this. And we're going to come across these bottoms right here. Okay. Those are our lows getting getting higher. Then let's bring a horizontal line across here. Okay, so this is an ascending triangle, and we're breaking out of that ascending triangle. Boy, we have really broken out that ascending triangle. Now, from a from from a technical analysis standpoint, when you have a long candle like that, some investors are okay saying calling the midway point of that a theoretical support level. Okay. So we could look at possibly the midway point there as being a theoretical support. In fact, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it here just a little bit and say, okay, 
This is a theoretical support level, but this is the more significant support level right here at that $60 level. And that's a long ways away from where we're at. I don't know if we'll be able to get down below that or not. Okay. How does how, how does this match up though with, re, with regards to Fibonacci extensions and retracements? I'm going to use this run over here. Determine that, you know, this is actually a top and then we had a bottom here. So we could also go from here to here, but this one's a looks, I'm, why don't we, why don't we go ahead and take a look at this run here? Okay. I'm going to come over here and let's just start at the top here and oops, we want to grab our fib tool here for just a second here and go from this top right here to this bottom right there. Right there. And so we're fairly close here with regards to this 76 level. So 76% of the way up here, fairly close here. It's not right on it, okay, but it is fairly close, okay. So if we can get down then below this, where, where are we sitting at this one? It looks like this is this is the lower level. That can can we can we sell a short put vertical at sixty or lower here? I come up here to the trade page, and here is sixty. That's got a twenty seven delta, which is something that we like. That means our theoretical probability of success is seventy three percent. Do a right click here. I'm going to choose sell. Vertical, whoa, that's a big credit, but you, you can also see that on PayPal right here, we have we have a lot of slippage between the bid and the ask price. We're probably not going to get 37 here. We're probably going to have to come down somewhere in this area in order to get a fill, because just because of the great disparity we have here between the natural and the mid, all I just do is I'll come down here, maybe pick about a midway point here, and it looks like that's going to be at about 25. If we and and look how and and look how how quickly this is changing as well. Okay, I take that padlock off of there. Right there, yeah. But so it looks like we possibly could get twenty five at sixty. Go here and take a look at the chart here. So that would be sitting here then at the sixty level, which is light in right here would be where we'd be sitting at. So we'd be sitting below that breakout point. Okay, all right, investors. So. Let me put together a quick little poll here real fast. We're going to take a vote between um, C. Take a look at C. Here, C. You'll remember C. Kind of look at that and make a note. What you, what you might want to do is, is, give, is give the trade on C um, a, a, you know, rate it, rate it from 1 to 10. Just from a technical analysis standpoint, assuming that we can sell at or below that support level. So there's C. Here's WFC. Rate it. Okay. There's our breakout point somewhere down below there. There's WFC. And then PayPal. This PayPal is kind of interesting because we do have that ascending triangle and a breakout of that, which makes the support level a little bit more significant. Okay. So got those rated. Let me put, put together a quick poll here. I'm going to send this poll out and y'all can take a vote here. C, WFC, and PayPal. So there we go. That one is off. Okay. So we've got the poll out there. Just go ahead and feel free to vote for one of those, and we'll go ahead and just put up a put together a short vertical on one of those. I'm looking over here, and so far PayPal has got the got the majority. We'll we'll do a we'll we'll do a 10 second count, okay? So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. PayPal has it with 58%. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do it. Short vertical here on PayPal. Okay. All right. So I'm going to, we've got our Fibonacci's here. Let's go ahead and come in here to the trade page in here on PayPal. And there's PayPal. Here's our credit. Now, it, now when, when we're looking at this investors, we're looking at the 60 here. Okay. Has a delta of 27. So our theoretical probability of success is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of, it depends on where this is now, now it's at 28, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 71 to 73% is our theoretical probability of success. We're, you know, in, a, in an actual trading situation, we'd go ahead and try to catch this mid, okay? And we'll, and, and, and we'll do that here, okay? But I'm going to, I'm going to say that, yeah, we, uh, because we're going out 30 here, we're going to need a little bit more than that. This, this thing's bouncing around. I'm going to set this at 25. We may have to let it sit there for a while as, as this thing's around, because this thing, this thing's kind of bizarre. It goes up to 30 and then down to 25. A lot of volatility because of the amount of the slippage right there. So I'm going to set it here at 25. When we get, when we can get filled at 25, we'll take it. If we don't have an opportunity to get filled at 25, we're okay passing on the trade. Seeing how this is bounced around, I feel 
I feel fairly confident that we'll get filled, but we may not get filled immediately here during our discussion. Let's go ahead and determine how many of these we want to do. So our theoretical risk is going to be $75 per contract. This is outside of transaction fees. Let's say we're okay risking $500 on this one. We'll take 500, 500 divided by 75 equals six of these. So we'll go ahead and do six of these. One, two, three, four, five, six. And let's go, uh, well, we're 24. Let's go ahead and hit this guy here. Short verticals, we'll send that in there. And let me come back over here and pull up that working order. I'm going to come over here and do click, cancel, replace. Oh, we got filled. So <laughs> I said, oh, we got filled because now this now this is up to 32. But I, I did I didn't really show you one thing. When when we hit confirm and send, you, all, you, you always want to read this box, okay? And particularly what's in red here. Please know you've selected the weekly option series with non-standard expiration date. Okay, you always want to pick up that what's in the red, as well as look at your breakdown here for your order. You know, here's our credit and and the like. We were able to get 25 out of it. Maybe we could have got 31, but we're okay with the 25. That meets up with our with the with the return on risk that we are looking for. Okay. We'll delete that because we don't need that any longer. Okay. So we have a trade then on PayPal. Well, this might be a good time then to go ahead and take a peek over at our other positions here. We also we particularly want to take a look at Google here. Okay. So we got we got Google here. Um, Netflix looks like we have 15 days till Netflix. It looks like it's doing fine. We're at 613. Our our short is at 575, so we're in a good place there. NVIDIA is in a good place. We've got nine days left on NVIDIA. We're sitting at 894. Our short put is at 735. We just put on PayPal. Some of you remember that our Google trade got into trouble, and because of that, we converted it to an iron butterfly. In fact, let's go ahead and review that. Come up here to account statement, and let's bring up Google here, G-O-G-L. Google, and we want to do a trade history, and we want to go back about 30 days. Should that do it for us? I think that's going to do it for us. So here is our trade here, okay? Let's just go through a little bit of math here on Google. First of all, let's let's take a look at the chart. So we originally did a short put vertical on Google, on Google and our, our high strike price on the put was at 137. If we bring up the chart for Google, G O O G L. You can see that we were we were looking at we were anticipating this support level to hold up in here, and it just blew all the way through that. Okay, so as it was blowing through, and I think it was on this day right here, as we started to slide down here, and we went through the one thirty seven, I decided to at that particular time convert this to an iron butterfly. What an iron butterfly does is it it actually decreases your risk in the trade. Okay without um, so so so, ba so 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 when you do this what what is what is a little bit what is little what is a little bit unusual is we create a situation where we increase our potential return on risk and at the same time we decrease our potential risk on the trade so if we're if we're decreasing our risk and increasing our return what does that tell us? There's there's three things to look at, generally speaking, when we're, when we're looking at an option trade. And what we've said is we've changed this. We've changed our short vertical on this. We converted to an iron butterfly. In doing that, we increased our potential return and we've decreased our risk. There's the third thing in there that we need to keep in mind, and that's the probability. Okay, So it's true. We increased our potential return. We decreased our risk, but we severely limited our probability. And we talked about that when we when we when we did that. But just kind of to go through the numbers, this was the original trade right here. And so when we first entered our trade right here, what was our theoretical risk? Well, we got a credit of of twenty one. It's a dollar wide, so our theoretical risk was what? Our theoretical risk on that would be take one hundred here minus twenty one. Our theoretical risk was seventy nine times six was $474. The trade started to go against us, and I, and I opted to uh, do in part to uh, uh, for, for teaching purposes, okay? 
teach first, to go ahead and convert that to an iron butterfly. Keep in mind when you do this, when we talked about this when we did it, the ideal time to do this conversion is as the stock is crossing through the short strike price on your vertical. That is the ideal time. That's when you'll, that's when you'll get the greatest amount of premium for the, for the other side of the trade. And the other side of this trade is simply, we just added a short call vertical to our short put vertical, but we're sharing the same short strike price. We're basically writing a short call vertical at the money. And that's why we're able to get a bigger premium. That's why we're able to capture this premium right here. Okay, so we added a second premium here, 42. So now what is our, after we add, after we add the second premium, what does that bring our risk down to? Well, our risk was 79. Now we're gonna subtract from that 42. Okay, so now our risk is 37 times six of these. See, our risk is now is 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 now 222. So we decreased our risk, okay? And we also increased our potential return. If we come over and take a look at the analyze page, we pull up Google and we bring up a risk profile. Look at our let's do um, let's hide simulations. There's our position. Look at our potential return up here. Our potential return is 300, okay? Here's our risk now in relationship to you, 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 you can see you, you can see they kind of bounce out. But this is our very narrow area of success right here. We're sitting all the way out here. So the question now becomes on the on the Google trade is this investors, we have two days for this to for this to get into profitability, we have to drift back down here fairly close to 137. So let's take a look at the chart. Here's Google. Where's 137? 137 is right there. Is it possible in the next couple of days for Google to fade and hit the 137? Absolutely it is, okay? So we can let it go. We're sitting here on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, we could very easily, well, I shouldn't say very easily, okay? Let's just say there is the possibility that Google could fade and drop down into that area and, and drop down into that profitability area. So that would be one thing is let it go. Realize we already decreased our risk. So even if it doesn't come down here and fade into there, our, our, our loss is gonna be significantly less than what our maximum loss would have been. But there's also something else we wanna keep in mind here. Look where we're trading here. We're trading at 140. What was the short strike price on our short put vertical? It was 137. What if we had not changed this into an iron butterfly? We would be in fine shape right now. We probably would be looking at our maximum gain um, over the next two days, we, we may even, in, in, in fact, at this particular point in time, if we hadn't done anything, we could actually be at a point today where we could get out of the trade, maybe at 85 to 90% of our maximum gain. Of course, that, of course, that is hindsight, okay? <laughs> All right. And hindsight is always 2020. But, but you do want to keep those things in mind, particularly um, when you are trading, you want to keep a trading journal and you want to note things. Hey, you know what? I changed this trade to an iron butterfly. The reality is, the stock recovered, and it would have been better off if I hadn't changed it into the iron butterfly. Also the possibility though that it could drift down and we could get a return greater than the iron butterfly, okay? So now there is one other situation here. So one thing one, one thing we do here, investors, we can just leave this, okay? Or another possibility is we could consider a change of polarity. What would be involved in that? And what would be some of the considerations in relationship to that? Let's come back over here to the monitor page here. And I'm actually going to come over here to, uh, let's see, we want to come over here to activity and positions. Here's our activity and positions. Now, with, with regards to a change of polarity, let me see if I got a little drawing page here so we can do a little bit of a review on this. Grab a drawing tool here and we'll take a vote on this as well. Change of polarity or no change of polarity. Huh. Maybe I'm not going to be able to bring up a drawing tool. Oh, there it is right there. Okay. All righty. Okay. So if we wanted to do a change of player to this, notice that our two calls are in the money. That calls in the money and that calls in the money. You notice that we're long the 138 and we're also, and we're short to 137. A change of polarity simply involves buying back the 137. Okay. So, taking that 137 and buying it back. So let's just, I'm just gonna put a check mark there. So we buy that back and we leave the 138 call in place. 
Now, the risk in doing this is we open ourselves up again to additional risk. If you do a change of polarity, you're going to open yourself up to, to additional risk, uh, more risk than before you actually do the change of polarity. Right now, we, we, right now, we theoretically know what our maximum loss is on this trade. When you do a change of polarity, um, it, it really opens up the door because you're not sure exactly where, where your loss could be. You can set a stop loss in order to manage that somewhat, but there's no guarantee of where that stop loss may be filled. But if we did do a change of polarity, we basically buy back this short position and leave this long position in place right here. So looking at this then and looking at the numbers around it, So come over here. So this 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 is the mark price, and what I what I what I want you to look at is I want you to look at the difference between these mark price. Because if we buy this call back, that's going to be the one thirty seven. If we buy that back, how much value needs to be increased to this call in order to get to a break even point? Okay. If we buy this thing back and then we let this thing run, okay, how far is it going to have to run in order for us to? Get a break even point. In other words, in order for us to get a situation where, where these two transactions would basically zero each other out, and then would be left with the original credit related to the call right there. Okay, if we're if we're left with the original credit with the call, we've already said that the put is in that that we've already said that the put is fine. Then that should overall be a be a profitable trade, right? Let's grab a calculator here and look at some numbers in relationship to that. Okay. All right. So first of all, we want to look at the difference. Uh, can I get my thing over here to look? Uh, where can I squeeze that in? Can I make this smaller? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's a little smaller. How about right there? Okay. So what is what's the current what is the current difference in the premiums there? Or, or the value of these. Well, this is this one's at three forty-five. This one's at two sixty-five. So let's take three forty-five minus two sixty-five. So the difference is eighty cents. So after we buy back this long position, how far does the stock have to go in order for us to make back that eighty cents? Okay. Making making back that eighty cents, which is going to zero out our call side right here, which means we're able to keep that original call credit. Plus, we have the put credit on top of that, provided the stock continues to move to the upside. Okay. But how far is it going to move? Well, in order to determine that, we need to take a look here at the delta. Now, this this is a cumulative delta for six contracts. So I'm going to take this delta right here. That's on our long position. I'm going to divide that by six. So we got. I'm going to note the eighty right there. I'm going to take right here. That is going to be that delta is 456. I'm going to take 456 divided by six. That delta is sitting here at 76. Okay. So for a one dollar move in the underlying security, from a theoretical perspective, our mark price should increase by 76 cents. Well, how far do we need it to increase? We need to increase by we need to increase by 80 cents. Okay. What I can do is I can take 80 right here and I can divide that by 76. That's telling me the price has to move by a dollar five. Now, we probably want to give ourselves some wiggle room and let's just, let's just, let's just say a buck and a half, okay? So if we buy this one back, do we feel confident the price will move up by a dollar and a half before we get wiped out on this thing? And when I say wiped out, I mean if the price if the price does not go up and it moves down, well, then we're going to lose. We're going to lose 76. We're going to lose 76 for the first dollar to the downside and possibly more than that for the second dollar and the third dollar. So this is where you open yourself up to risk. OK, so what do you think, investors? Um, a little bit over a dollar move here. Do we want to see what's going on here? Do we want to go ahead and buy back the short position and look for this thing to run an additional dollar from where it's at now over Thursday and Friday? Today, so far, we've moved to dollar fifty-eight. Do we want to do that? If we do that, then that then, th then that will turn the whole trade around. We've got profitability on the call side. We we'll have profitability on the put side on both of those. Okay. So, do we want to do that or? 
do we want to just leave it where it's at and just say, you know what, let's look for a drift. I'm not comfortable adding the additional risk. We know what the numbers are, okay? So let's go ahead and, and let me put together a little poll on this one. Um, let's see, I think I can do this one. Let's go and, okay. The poll is off and going here, okay? All right, so change the polarity, yes or no, all right? Change the polarity, yes or no. Okay, I'm gonna do the 10 second countdown here, okay? So we got 10, <laughs> nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. No. Okay. All right. You guys you guys wanna want wanna play the conservative side of it. Okay, so we have a no on that. We will go with the no then. All right, investors. Well, look, I, I I want to come over here and take one peek over here in the chat window, see if maybe there's some questions I can help with, help help out with. Again, a big thanks to Cameron for helping us out over there in the chat window on there. And if you're not seeing the poll, that's unfortunate. Hopefully, it, maybe maybe there's a setting there for, with regards to not seeing. It looks like most of the folks are seeing it. Okay. All right, so from Vivian here, uh, Ken, doesn't the long call have to move by the loss of the short? Uh, the long call just has to, basically, the long call just has just has to pick up the difference between the two. Well, you know, now you know you're bringing up a good point here. Let me let me let me let me revisit that here for just a second. Oh oh oh, you know what? I think you may have a good point there. Maybe I miss maybe I missed that. Yeah, if we buy this back, well, you know, actually, actually it will, because, you know, if the if this increases in value by 80 cents, then that's going to cover the cost of this, right? Because we're starting off here at whatever it is, and then we're adding to that the 80 cents, and that will re that 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 will cover that that will cover the cost to buy this thing back, okay? On that. Okay, let me catch any other questions over here. And let's see. Um, are, are there any guidelines regarding the iron butterfly trade, um, trade management with respect to ratio between the, there aren't, there aren't really guidelines, you know, basically what you can do is, is just use the analyze page right here. Okay. To put it together and, and kind of get an idea. Okay. If, 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 uh, in doing this, I've decreased my risk here, but I've opened up this where we've severely limited this, but as far as guidelines, you know, that. That is a great question. Probably be good. Probably would be a good idea to put together some guidelines related to that. In fact, I'll give that some thought. Perhaps we'll put together some guidelines in relationship to that here going forward. Okay. All right, everybody. Well, again, a big thanks over there to Cameron for helping out with the questions. And let's go ahead and wrap things up here for today. Okay. Let's see how we did on our discussion here for today. All right. So. What do we do here today? Well, we, um, oh, you know, one other item that we usually take care of, and that's just do a little review of our overall performance, okay? We started doing these trades back in July of 2020. We have now completed 196 trades. We've been successful on 82.1% of those trades. We've been unsuccessful on 17.9% of those trades. Our average return on risk has been 16.5%. And that, that average return does take into consideration all of the losing trades. Our average days in the trade is, has, has been 13.8 days. So that are, those are the numbers from my trading journal. I'd encourage all of you to keep a trading journal. And hopefully, we'll have a trading journal here before too long that we can share. That is in the works, is, is my understanding, okay? All right, so what do we do here today? Well, we talked about short verticals and some of the nuances in relationship to that. We talked about... Um, entry and exit considerations, primarily looking at Fibonacci tool and also looking at bounces off support and looking for a confluence of those two indicators. Then we went ahead and we followed the steps that we use, usually use in here with regards to looking for particular returns and also probabilities related to that, okay? And just a little reminder, investors, you can follow me on X at, at Ken Rose CS. You can also follow Cameron on X as well. He posts a lot of great information over there. And I'm sure Cameron would be more than happy to post that to you over there in the chat window. That's going to be at Cameron May CS. Also, 
Um, don't uh, also uh, hang in here, okay, because following our session right here, immediately following our session right here, is managing an option portfolio. That's a great session that Cameron teaches as well. So, so hang around here and, and enjoy that session as well. All right, everybody, so that wraps it up for today's session. Uh, thanks again for joining us here today. I hope you have a, a great afternoon and evening, a wonderful rest of your week. Best of success here investing, and hope to see you back here again next time. Bye, everybody. We'll see you. Thanks again.